If you've started working with Notion and you're wondering what Notion formulas are and what they do and why you'd even use them, then this video is the right one for you. Because in this video, I want to give you a basic introduction to how Notion formulas work and in which cases they might be actually useful to you. And uh, don't worry, they might seem a bit intimidating and complicated, but actually they aren't uh, all that difficult to understand. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it and let me show you some of the basic concepts. So in Notion, the formulas have two um, parts that they're made of. The first one being constants, then there's operators, and then there's also functions. Let's start off with the constants. So constants are things like true or false, or actually mathematical constants like pi. So let me show you this right now. So this is a formula property. And if you just write down true, that actually gets displayed as this uh, checked checkbox. And um, on the other hand, if you use a false uh, checkbox, then it's like it's displayed as not checked. And uh, you wouldn't pretty use this uh, in this kind of fashion, but um, this is really nice to understand because uh, you can use this later to filter for things that are false and true. And uh, so you can use logic like this. Uh, also, uh, as I said, you could delete this. And there's also constants like E or pi. Um, so this will just display the value of pi. Next we have operators and uh, there are different kinds of operators. First of all, we have the basic mathematical operators. So for example, um, as we see here, we can do five times three, which equals 15. We would also say six minus two, which would then be displayed as four. Uh, we could also do seven divided by two, which will be 3.5. Uh, so you get the idea. This is just basic um, basic maths in these formulas. You can also do this based on other formulas. So let's, let me say this is number one and we'll change this to a number property. So we'll call it, let's say four. And we'll remo remove this like this. And then we'll add also number two and we'll make this a number as well move it over here make it a bit make it a bit smaller and then we'll say 8 and now what we can do in the formula is we could say let's calculate number 1 times number 2 and now you see it actually displays the calculation based on these two other properties one use case that this is really nice in is for, for example for using it as a grade calculator so uh, let's say you have these three exams right here and um, you get graded out of uh, 100 points and these are the points that you achieve then you can actually use this weight so you can actually do a weighted average and then calculate this weighted grade based on that. So we just have the grade, the weight, and then the weighted uh, grade is the formula. It just multiplies these two together um, to actually uh, perform this, uh, yeah, to get this weight. And then what we do is actually calculate the sum down here, which would then be your final grade. And as you see, if I was to, for example, change this to 67, um, all these uh, values change and are also our final grade changes. And you could also use this kind of calculation for, um, for example, to calculate your sales numbers and so on. Uh, there's lots and lots of use cases like this. Next is also logical operators. So uh, these can be used for logical comparisons. For example, uh, we could say five equals five. And this is true, so it gets this checked checkbox. If we would say five equals four, uh, it's not true, so this is uh, then displayed as an unchecked box. Uh, we could also say 10, uh, let's say 10 is smaller than 5, which is not true, but if we say 10 is smaller than 12, then it's true again. And um, yeah, there's lots and lots of ways you could do this. Um, you can also do this in a text format, so you could say equal, and then you could have tr uh, two values, so for example, we could use this, uh, let's just do, do this. We could say equal five comma five. And then again, this is the same as doing the double uh, equal sign. The last thing that you can do with these operators is the uh, if operator or the if statement, uh, which is um, a concept that's often used in programming, um, but it's not that hard to understand. So basically what you do is you, uh, again, you have a condition, and if that condition is true, then something happens, and if it's false, then something else happens. Uh, so again, we could uh, do this, let me show you just a quick example. We'll use this if, 
and then we'll again say if uh, 6 is bigger than 5 then we want to uh, say true and if we uh, if it's not bigger than 5 then we want to say false and now put that in brackets and you see this um, puts out true because uh, obviously 6 is bigger than 5. If we change this up to let's say 8 here you say see this is displayed as false. Uh, there's lots and lots of ways you can implement this um, but um, that's it for now. I'll show you another example later in the video uh, so stay tuned for that but now let's move on first of all. Alright, now we come to functions and functions pretty much are predefined mathematical or logical operations. So um, it's pretty much uh, like a piece of code that's already written that performs a certain task um, and then you could, that you could uh, directly use to, to do something. So first of all we have the mathematical functions, um, there's lots and lots of them to use. Um, for example, the, there's a cube root, um, you can round down to the uh, largest integer that's smaller uh, or equal to the number that you have. Uh, let's use that right now. So uh, we could say floor 5.8 and then that's, that gets rounded down to 5 because uh, it takes the uh, biggest number that that's smaller than the uh, number right, right here. We could also do seal which is the uh, exact opposite so it rounds up um, and we can just do round um, which then will uh, round uh, like we normally are used to it so 5.4 would be rounded down 5.6 would be rounded up another mathematical function would be for example the max function so if we have a series of values 6 uh, 7 8 10 and uh, 15 for example it would then um, give us back the biggest value in that uh, row of values. Next we have the date functions and they can be used to give back various uh, versions of the date so for example we have uh, we'll just type it in the now function which gives back the current date so um, today is December 16th and um, it's 11:29 uh, a.m. And this is pretty useful. You can also calculate things like the date between. So you can uh, take two dates and then you can actually uh, see how much time is in between. Uh, you could also do um, date add. So you could actually add a um, certain number of days to a date. For example, uh, we could say date add now. And then we say seven and we want this to be days. So you could also say add seven seconds, seven months, so on. And uh, now you see now it's uh, the December 23rd. Now one way you could use this is to check for overdue events. So uh, for example, let's say in this case we have a project, then we have a date assigned to it. Um, and this could be something like, um, for example, if you have a CRM, if you're doing sales in Notion, uh, you could have, for example, clients that you want to check back in with uh, like once a month. And then you could uh, set this as, uh, we'll call this uh, check in, oh, call it check in date. And this one will be the time when you last checked in with your client. And now what it does is um, if 30 days have passed since the last check-in, then this will become overdue. So in this case, you see this is on October 27th, which is more than 30 days back. And this is uh, why this is now an overdue task. And now you could have a kind of a project board or like a CRM uh, system where you always see these uh, overdue contacts where you have to uh, contact the client again, for example. And how this works is, we have this if statement and then we have the date add property so we add uh, 30 days to now uh, uh, so sorry we add 30 days to the check-in date and if that is bigger than today's date then we display true so um, if there's a bigger difference between um, the check-in date and now than 30 days uh, then this will become true and the task will be overdue 
All right, so these are pretty much the basics. And now I want to show you one more use case that is often used in uh, Notion. So that lots and lots of people like to implement using formulas. And uh, this gives you kind of like an, a bit of, a better understanding of what else these formulas are capable of. Um, this is the progress bars um, use case. So uh, again, let's let's say we have we are um, doing sales in Notion, for example, and then we have these certain uh, different projects or clients, and we have different statuses here. So uh, first of all, we start off with the status of a potential client. Then we have the first contact. We have have sent the offer. Uh, then we are in the negotiations, and then we are signing the contract. And based on that now, we can actually display these progress bars. So we have 20% progress, 40% progress, 60% progress, 80% progress, and then we have 100% progress. Uh, now, if you go in here, this actually looks a bit complicated, um, but um, I'll share the uh, code to this. So the, the, um, uh, the formula, I'll share that in the uh, below this video. What we're doing um, basically is we're checking if this uh, status is uh, this text string. So if the status is potential client, then we want to display uh, this this text here. So we want to display this 20% progress bar. Uh, if it's first contact, we want to display 40% and so on. And if it's none of these, then we want to display zero. Um, but that's usually not the case. And now, as you see, if I, for example, change this offer sent from well, what's now 60% to a potential client, then it changes to 20%. If I change it back to, for example, contract signed, which is project completed, then you see this also is shown up uh, as project completed. All right, that was it for this quick introduction to Notion formulas. Um, Notion formulas can be really useful already, um, but they will become exponentially more useful uh, once the Notion API is being launched, which will be early in 2021. So uh, I would really recommend that you kind of get familiar with these formulas because I think that they will become really, really powerful once the API has launched. Uh, and you can do a mo lots more with it. So um, yeah, try uh, these formulas out. I'll leave the progress bar code and uh, the progress bar template in the description down below. And um, besides from that, if you enjoyed the video, uh, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye.